Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. I'm your host, Ava Blackwell. Let's take a look at the headlines. Liberal candidate and former Deputy Prime Minister for Justin Trudeau's government, Christia Freeland, has been flagged on Twitter for sharing manipulated media. The Pfizer vaccine gets full FDA approval. Canada has officially entered the fourth wave of the pandemic, with the Delta variant causing a rapid increase in COVID-19 cases. Across the United States, teachers are facing outrage from parents in response to the mask mandates. 1,100 people have been evacuated from Afghanistan and moved to Canada. The Panjshir Valley remains the center of anti-Taliban resistance, as well as the only region not under Taliban control in Afghanistan. Russian police detain protesters. The Taliban have reportedly sentenced the brother of an American translator to death in Afghanistan. To begin, former Deputy Prime Minister and incumbent Liberal candidate Christia Freeland has been under fire for sharing manipulated media via Twitter. In the video Freeland shared, Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole was asked if he would bring private health care to Canada. In response, O'Toole quickly says yes. However, left out from the video are O'Toole's further comments that universal access to health care is critical. Subsequently, Twitter has flagged Freeland's tweet as manipulated media, and the Conservative Party accused the Liberals of spreading misinformation. The Liberal Party maintains that it has done nothing wrong and the video was accessible via a link shared by Freeland. Start by setting the record straight on what I said about vaccines this morning. Since the leader of the official opposition misconstrued my words, something which is becoming a bad habit of his. As Moderna's chief medical officer said this week, and I quote, Canada is in the front row on vaccines. I know that and I know our rollout will be a success. And since the leader of the official opposition mentioned France, let me inform him that the EU said this week their regulators will not take a decision on Pfizer until December 29th, on Moderna not until July 12th. We have to find public, private, uh, synergies and make sure that universal access remains paramount. Let me be perfectly clear. I 100% support our public and universal health care system. We're giving an additional $60 billion to secure that public health care system. In the middle of the pandemic, the leader of the Conservative Party came out to support for profit health care. That's just unacceptable. 7,500. That's how many family doctors, nurses, and nurse practitioners we're going to help hire. In other news, the Food and Drug Administration has approved Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Previously, the Pfizer vaccine for COVID was given emergency authorization use by the FDA. Now, the Pfizer vaccine is the first COVID-19 vaccine to be reviewed by the FDA, as well as approved by them. This recent development could have many consequences for vaccine mandates and for reassuring many people who have been hesitant to receive the vaccine. Indeed, the Kaiser Family Foundation conducted a poll in June, which found that 31% of the United States unvaccinated population stated that they would be more likely to get the vaccine if it were approved by the FDA. Those who've been waiting for full approval should go get your shot now. Well, wrapping up the summer in Ontario, the Delta variant has reared its ugly head. While cases of COVID-19 have remained low for the majority of the summer, the province reported its highest numbers of daily infections since June on Sunday with 722 infections. While the majority of new infections were among people who were unvaccinated, 158 people with double doses were infected as well. New estimates from the Ontario Science Advisory Table shows that Ontarians can expect cases to reach over 1,000 before back-to-school season. The advisory table also found that those with two doses were 88% less likely to be infected and 96% less likely to be hospitalized as compared to those who are unvaccinated. We are at the start of the Delta-driven fourth wave but that the trajectory will depend on ongoing increase in fully vaccinated coverage and the timing, pace and extent of reopening. In the United States, the topic of masks to stop the spread of COVID-19 has been a polarizing one. As schools begin to reopen, many educators fear parents who have expressed anger because of these provisions. These fears are not groundless. 
Indeed, some parents have become violent towards educators for enforcing mask mandates. A teacher in California was attacked by a parent, and another parent ripped a mask off a teacher's face in Texas. Moreover, law enforcement officers have been called in to respond to angry protesters at school board meetings in Pennsylvania and Nevada. Despite this vocal group, most Americans are in favor of mandatory masking. According to a recent Axios Ipsos poll, 69% of Americans support mask mandates. Back in Canada, amid the Taliban takeover, 1,100 people have been evacuated from Afghanistan and brought into Canada. The evacuation process began on August 4th, before being briefly halted due to the chaos at the Kabul airport. In recent days, the first 40 Afghan families to arrive in Canada have completed their COVID-19 quarantine. Canada is hopeful that as air bridges reopen, more Afghan refugees will be able to leave the nation. However, the evacuation process has been made more complicated due to the precarious situation on the ground in Afghanistan and particularly at the Kabul airport. Comparatively, the United States has evacuated 17,000 people from Afghanistan to date. I can confirm that Canadian Armed Forces assets and personnel have arrived on the ground to coordinate at a tactical level with the U.S. and with our allied partners. In Afghanistan, anti-Taliban resistance in the Panjshir Valley under the leadership of Ahmed Massoud, the son of infamous Afghan resistance fighter Ahmed Shah Massoud, has kept the region out of the hands of the Taliban. Due to the geographic features of the Panjshir Valley, there is only one way in and out of the region from Kabul, making the valley incredibly difficult to overthrow. While the Taliban are surrounding the region, Massoud is following in his father's footsteps and refusing to back down. He is calling on international aid from France, Europe, the U.S. and Arab countries who assisted in his father's resistance to the Soviets two decades ago. Joining the resistance in the region is the overthrown vice president of Afghanistan, Amrullah Saleh. The Taliban hope to gain the Panjshir Valley through peaceful means, and Massoud remains open to negotiate with the Taliban if necessary. In Russia, police detained journalists who protested the decision to call an independent TV channel a foreign agent. The term foreign agent can undermine the credibility of media outlets in Russia, as well as their opportunity for advertisements. The TV channel in question has been highly critical of Russian authorities, crackdown on dissent. Protesters held a sign that read, journalism is not a crime, you are afraid of the truth, and more outside of the main headquarters of the Federal Security Service, FSB. Protesters who were detained were handed summons to court hearings for the charge of breaching rules on holding pickets. The offense can result in a fine of up to 270 U.S. dollars. Returning to Afghanistan, despite the Taliban's assurances that it will not seek retribution against those who helped U.S. and NATO forces during the war in Afghanistan, CNN has uncovered letters from the Taliban to the brother of an American translator sentencing him to death for his brother's service. The third of these letters notes that because the accused did not stop helping his brother and providing service to American troops and also failed to show up to a hearing, that he was guilty by absentia. His penalty is death, and the court decision is noted as final. This incident, as well as many other alleged reports of the Taliban contradicting its peaceful international persona, have left many fearful that the Taliban will be no less brutal than it was in the 1990s. President Joe Biden and his government are under intense pressure to evacuate former U.S. employees in Afghanistan and any other individual fearing for their lives in Afghanistan. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any of our latest content. <laughs>